I know I am not alone in saying that I would love to see a New Jersey Transit that is more efficient, reliable, and safe. I'm thankful that New Jersey now has a governor who is prioritizing transit and keeping commuters like me in mind. Thank you, Governor Murphy, for looking for ways to help hundreds of thousands of New Jerseyans, like me, who rely on New Jersey Transit and for finally taking steps to move New Jersey Transit forward. With that, it is my honor to introduce Governor Phil Murphy. Thank you so much. Incredibly well said. Good morning, everyone, and thank you all for joining us here in the touch. And thank you, Laura, uh, for your comments and uh, introduction. And rest assured that all of us here share the commitment to getting this system, which you and hundreds of thousands of your fellow New Jerseyans rely upon every day, back to meeting our high standards for excellence. An honor to have mom and dad with us, so that's a treat. Uh, and I would. I would be remiss if I did not ask for an invitation to come in and sing harmony at some Friday night with your band. So <laughs> please keep that in mind if you could. It's also a pleasure uh, for me to be joined at the podium by my partners in this effort, Commissioner of Transportation, Diane gutierrez Scacchetti, New Jersey Transit Executive Director, Kevin Corbett, uh, Senate Minority Leader, Tom Kane. Senator, thank you for being here. Senate Transportation Committee Chairman, Senator Pat Dygel. Thank you, Pat, for being here, in whose district we are today. Um, I also welcome our friends from Organized Labor. Ray, thank you in particular for being here, from the business community, from the community public. I want to thank Mayor Jonathan Bush for hosting us so graciously. Joe, thank you for representing Edison uh, uh, today here, uh, and everybody from, uh, again, uh, whether it's business, labor, community, public, thanks for coming here. So today we're releasing the results of the comprehensive strategic financial and operational audit of NJ Transit. Each, is, each of us up here and all of you out there knew that there were shortcomings in the way that NJ Transit worked at its most basic and elemental level. We all watched over a period of years as what was once a national model for regional mass transit was racked by politics and poor management and virtually defunded. We all heard the anecdotal evidence uh, the, from the firsthand stories of commuters like the ones that Laura just told to the testimony of officials. We were able to get a handle on where some of the shortcomings were and began to formulate solutions. We knew NJ Transit needed new leadership with a clear focus on rider safety and on-time performance, and we initiated that through the appointments of Diane and Kevin. We knew NJ Transit needed the state to be a partner in getting its finances back in order, so we nearly tripled operating support through our budget and negotiated a potential uh, fair and negated rather a potential fair hike through at least next June 30th. We knew NJ Transit needed more rolling stock to reduce overcrowding while train cars were upgraded for positive train control, the federally mandated safety system, and we went out and we got them. We knew NJ Transit needed a new focus and mindset in its communication strategy, and we're instituting that so customers will not be left stranded on platforms without answers. But we knew we needed to do more than just, as they say, pop the hood, change a couple of spark, pl spark plugs, and expect the car to run as new. We knew, we knew we needed to pull out the engine, break it down, and assess it piece by piece to rebuild it stronger and to ensure safe and reliable long-term performance. NJ Transit engaged the North Highland Company to be that mechanic, and they did just that. This audit is what will allow us to begin rebuilding NJ Transit and restore faith in its operations. Where the audit identified a broken operational chain of command, it, re it recommends a streamlined leadership structure to allow Kevin to do his job better and for senior managers to do theirs. For customers to know their concerns won't fall into a black hole and for NJ Transit to run more smoothly and more transparently. We will put this in place. Where the audit found a lack of critical future-focused strategic planning, from HR functions like recruitment and talent retention, to potential non-fair revenue sources, to asset management, to technological needs, to giving the NJ Transit board a shot in the arm, among other areas, the, the audit recommends processes for the agency and its leadership 
to move away from reacting to crises to becoming proactive and ready to respond. And we will put all of these in place. Where the audit identified low workforce morale, it recommends new practices to empower and rejuvenate NJ Transit's dedicated employees. We will put them in place. Where the audit found weaknesses in the procurement process that created untenable delays in something as basic as maintaining an inventory of necessary parts, it also recommends the means for streamlining processes so employees can get to work doing repairs and putting stock back online. We will put them into place. Now, these are just a few of the areas covered in the audit. We could easily stay here until the evening rush hour, pouring over each page if we wanted. Where we can act administratively to implement key recommendations, we are doing so. Where we need to work in partnership with the legislature to implement others, we are doing so. We are not going to let this audit collect dust. When I took office, I did so with a pledge to get NJ Transit right. While not every day, I too look to NJ Transit to get me from my home to my office or in a meeting, whether it be in Trenton or Newark or elsewhere. In fact, I took NJ Transit this morning. I've had the opportunity to talk, to talk with other commuters and engineers. They all say the same thing. They believe in NJ Transit and they want to see us fix it. These experiences have not just redoubled my commitment to fixing NJ Transit, they have steeled my determination to fix it. And I've said all along this isn't going to happen overnight. It will require us to constantly step back and assess even as we continue to move forward. But I believe as we implement the recommendations of this audit, the fair paying public and NJ Transit's dedicated employees will begin to see real and noticeable improvement. With that, it is now my pleasure to hand the microphone over to the Commissioner of Transportation and Chair of the New Jersey Transit Board, Diane Gutierrez Scuchetti. Diane? Good morning. Um, the first thing I'd like to do is, as a mom, to apologize to, to Laura. Um, I know for me, as my children were growing up, nothing was worse than being stuck um, and unable to get to an important event children have. Um, and so when we put our families first, I think we go a long way to being, uh, to, to really raising them and making them feel important. And when we miss those things, children feel as though they're not. And so to the extent that New Jersey Transit has had that impact, um, it is certainly something that we want to correct. And so please, uh, one mother to another, um, we're going to make this work. But I think the important part about the report as you look at it is to remember what it did is validate what our observations have been over the last nine months. Its real value, though, was to really dig down deep and identify just the depth of the issues that we're facing, and, and they are just not small. Uh, we've talked a lot about what has gone wrong. This report is our opportunity today to start new, to use the document as a foundation to bring New Jersey Transit into the 21st century and to make it an agency that our customers both expect and deserve. How does that happen? And the governor went through some of the highlights of the report. But from a board standpoint, we look at the fact that it lacks a strategic plan. An organization to be successful, any organization, small or large, must have a vision. It must have a path. And so we will work hard in the early days of this report's issuance to develop a strategic plan with the senior leadership of New Jersey Transit. We, will listen, we listen every month and will continue to listen to the comments and the suggestions of our customers who attend our board meetings. One of the most important parts of it will be developing a technology base. Today, we, are, we, are, we lack the basic tools from a technology standpoint to integrate the systems that run against rail, bus, and, and communications. Um, often you hear us today talk about rail and the issues we have with trains. New Jersey Transit runs a very successful bus operation as well, and they will not be ignored or not be brought through the same upgrade process that the trains do. It, it is how we deliver all of our service, and that's what this audit addresses how New Jersey Transit delivers all of its service. And so the five top areas that they've identified for us to review are organizational structure, customer experience, procurement, personnel recruitment, and the operating capital funding sources. These are not new to anyone who has heard us speak over the last several months. And so as a board, we will support New Jersey Transit. We will support Kevin and his team in making certain that as a board, we can get through what Kevin needs to do, and then certainly with the support of the governor and the legislature, really close the loop and get New Jersey Transit back 
to the agency we all have known it to be. And with that, I'll turn it over to Kevin to give more details. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Governor. Thank you, uh, Diane. <clears throat> thank you, uh, Chairman Dygan and uh, Senator Kane and uh, certainly Mayor Bush. Thank you for uh, uh, hosting us at uh, our uh, transit facility here and all other elected uh, who are uh, important partners with us as we new uh, New Jersey Transit. Uh, the, go the Governor, the Commissioner, and I have stood uh, before you all before about talking about restoring New Jersey Transit to the national leader it once was. Uh, this report will serve as a roadmap for the work that lies ahead. Uh, to accomplish just that. Uh, but make no mistake, we have not been uh, sitting uh, idle waiting to uh, make the organizational improvements uh, that the uh, this assessment was underway. We have worked with North Highland and seen several issues that they identified uh, throughout the assessment that we began implementing preliminary recommendations while awaiting this report. Uh, we began making significant and transformative changes months ago, changes that will ultimately produce more consistent customer experience with better service reliability and improved communications an experience our customers expect and deserve. You all know, uh, as Diane mentioned, uh, we have the, the bus service, but you know, certainly a lot of the attention that is drawn, uh, the most observation is our rail service, uh, that has been critically hamstrung by a shortage of engineers. Indicatively, the training pipeline that was allowed to dry up uh, for years, uh, we have now changed the, uh, in the interim, have already trained the training classes from the previous period where there were none or one or two to now four, four per year. We're working with an outside rail specialist consultant to reduce the 20-month training process while still ensuring the course produces a safe engineering roster. And since conductors are already certified for some of the most uh, complex federal rules and so can be trained on the rest of the engineers' courses in about 12 months, we've offered a sign-on bonus to conductors who want to become engineers. This change will bear noticeable fruit a year from now, not two years down the road. On the bus side, we are now regularly conducting speed hiring events to cut down hiring delays, and we are offering a $6,000 signing bonus to new bus operators who already have their commercial driver's license with their brakes and passenger endorsements. We know we have to communicate better, so we've created a central war room for customer communications, so rail, bus, and light rail operation divisions, as well as the communications department, are all in the same room, which has resulted in already in information now being sent out to customers more quickly and more accurately. Having everyone in the same room also lets us quickly relay what our customers are saying on social media to our operating lines while also getting more information back out to our customers. <laughs> this report talks a great deal about the challenges of New Jersey Transit's human resource and procurement departments. The recommendations are valuable, and we've already begun implementing some of those recommendations. We are restaffing and reorganizing both departments. Practically speaking, this means the procurement department can par purchase the parts the railroad needs when it needs them so they can make the necessary repairs as quickly as possible, returning the, the, the vehicles to revenue service to maximize our capacity. This also means that the human resource side can give the railroad and bus division the engineers, operators, mechanics, and supervisors needed to ensure trains show up on time to ensure that the buses get to their stops when they're supposed to and that our customers have the most reliable and least stressful trips as possible, so indeed they can get home to their families on time. In addition to the normal challenges of restoring a badly depleted transit agency, we're driving to meet our federally mandated December 31st deadline to install, install positive train control. We've had to change red, rail schedules multiple times with more changes coming on October 14th, but failure to make that deadline is not an option New Jersey Transit will be running on, so that we need to be running on January 1st. I wish we could implement all the re recommendations in a week or a month. Believe me, I ride the train every day, so uh, boy, trust me, do I wish that uh, we could get this done quickly. Uh, but this is a process. We can't afford to make mistakes by rushing the process, but we'll do it as quickly and responsibly as possible until it is fully implemented. The, assess the assessment has given us a roadmap to more efficient New Jersey Transit and with the specific actionable items and recommendations it lays out. And with the continued guidance and support of the governor, the commissioner, and the le legislators, our customers, the citizens of New Jersey, will again have a transit system they can be proud of. Thank well you. Thank you. Thank you, Kevin. Thank you, Diana. Thank you, Kevin. Two quick points before I ask um, Senator Dugan to come up and Senator King to say a couple words. Um, and, and I think you've heard both Diane and Kevin refer to this. This is both a bus and a rail system. We have to, Ray will be mad at me if I don't re remind us all of that. We spend a disproportion of our time, I think for obvious reasons, and by necessity on the rail side, but maintaining a vibrant 
uh, top quality bus network is a is a top priority. Let there be no doubt. Secondly, we weren't all. And I'll speak for them and their teams. They weren't sitting around on their hands waiting for the audit to come out. Uh, th th there, there's an, been an enormous amount of work done over the past nine months since we uh, we, we got uh, in office, uh, and that's an important point to make. We're, we're, we were not, you know, the, the, they're they're outstanding professionals. Their team, many of whom are here today, bless you, are outstanding professionals. They had a sense of what we needed to do, and and we've been making a lot of the steps in that direction. So I want to make sure folks realize that. My honor to introduce uh, the chairman of the transportation committee of the Senate side, Senator Pat Dunn. Bobby Kennedy had a, a rule. You could never start a conversation with Senator Kennedy with the phrase, if only we did. Because he used to say, we can't go back. We can't undo. We can't uh, correct what should have been done in the past. We know how we got in the mess we're in right now. We basically had eight years of inattention and neglect. But we can't undo that. And pointing fingers are causing, or is going to accomplish nothing. The governor has put in place a terrific team, the commissioner and the director are as outstanding of people as I've ever worked with. Uh, I am really, really happy to see Labor here. You know, it's so funny. I used to be chair of the education committee, and I used to say the last person that we ask about what we should do to teach our kids better are the teachers. They should be the first people we ask. And you guys have to be part of this solution. And I know you care. You take pride in your work more than anybody. So, you know, the old joke, we're, we're here to help. I know uh, Senator Payne will say the same thing. Whatever legislative initiatives are needed to make this right, we're here to do it. Let's just make it happen. As Laura said, this is not an enhancement of your life. This is an essential element of your life. Mom and Pop want to get home in the afternoon. They don't want to watch the kids at midnight. <laughs> then they're done now. Uh, so again, anything we can do to help, uh, please, let's get this done. It's too important to the state of New Jersey. And thank you, Governor, for your leadership. Thank you, Pat. I appreciate it. Just ask it, Laura, if, if Senator Dyden was putting words in your mouth, Mom and Dad, so we have to talk about that later about the kids. Uh, this is not the first time Senator Kane has stood with us on issues related to NJ Transit, which proves uh, not, not only a point about his leadership and his passion for this, but also this is beyond politics. This is just doing the smart thing. When your Delta hand is the fourth smallest state geographically is in the nation and the densest, and you sit beside the likes of New York and Philadelphia getting transit right, has nothing to do with politics. It's just smart government. So with that, I'm honored to introduce Senate Minority Leader Tom King. Thank you. Thank you, Governor. Uh, when we first started discussing this issue, it was in my legislative district in Summit, which is where the Morrison Erie line is, and I also represent the Reverend Guy line. And the story that Flora tells and how it impacts her family and everybody involved in impacting her family uh, is a story that is told by many, many commuters. And not as well as you told it, because you encapsulated it the, with the impact on the family. And the fact that every hour that goes off schedule means you're not meeting a family event. It means you have to rely on others. And New Jersey Transit is the most forward-facing of almost any area of government. They have to get it right. They have to be reliable. When people are planning, their businesses, their family obligations, their life, they rely on New Jersey Transit getting it right. And all too frequently we've seen that that organization just hasn't lived up to that expectation. That impacts people's quality of lives, their ability to spend time with the families, it impacts where businesses are going to locate in the state of New Jersey, it impacts property values, because people need to rely on a system that has not met their expectations or the expectations of, of many people over the years. It's my privilege to join here today. As Pat said, we need to get this right. We need to make sure the legislature act in accordance with this recommendation. We create a partnership because the governor is right. This is an issue that is truly important to the future of New Jersey. Thank you, Governor. Thanks, Senator. Thank you. you know, Laura grew up here, so she's not in the category of the folks who moved here. Uh, you just you move back. Yeah. You just move. Where'd you move to Naples? Yeah, I mean the, the the amount of families and businesses that come to New Jersey for basically two reasons: public education, among the top couple in the country, and transit, getting them to work and back. That, that's the overwhelming core central thesis of New Jersey when it's working right and we're committed 
to getting that back uh, completely right. So we'll take a couple of questions before we go. Governor, Governor um, the report cites uh, uncertain, uh, unsustainable funding as one of the key failures here. But I, I haven't heard you offer since you've taken, taken office a, a single proposal that would address in the long term that lack of, of certainty and sustainability of the funding for energy transit. I mean, how, how do you plan on addressing this? Well, for a couple of things. First of all, the commuter has borne the burden of funding this system for too long. So we've put in place, as I mentioned in my remarks, we're holding off at any fair hike, at least until next June 30th. In a perfect world, I'd love to see that go on even longer, but I'm not sure we're in a perfect world. Secondly, working with the legislature, we put a big increase of funding from the state side of this uh, into this budget, and that's being put uh, to good use, believe me. And thirdly, as both both senators said, we need to sit down, take this auto, sit down with legislative leadership on uh, both sides of the aisle and figure that question out. Uh, I, you'd, I'd have to say today, I'm open-minded as to how we get there. I suspect they are as well, but we've got to get there in a responsible way. Please. Good morning. Sorry, I can neither you barely know. see you or hear you. I'm trying to speak up. One of the things that went past was Amtrak, and I'm just wondering, has Amtrak been, if New Jersey Transit has fallen down the job? As Amtrak bears some responsibility for the problem, specifically on this line, and does the report address anything that Amtrak needs to do, whether it's at Penn Station, yep. whether it's on this line, to yep. help you all? I mean, an obvious point is that we're in bed with Amtrak, uh, for better or for worse, right? So, as you say, the train just went by. Penn Station is a big uh, focus point. Um, do you want to comment specifically on, on I, would, uh, I would just simply say that you know New Jersey Transit as an agency is not going to point fingers at its partners. Um, we take responsibility for that which we have to fix, and, and we will do that. Um, we will work with Amtrak and others to make certain that um, if there's something they can help us with, we're not shy, I don't think. Um, but I don't think the report is meant to do anything but help New Jersey Transit strengthen its own house before we look at anybody else's. Governor. Just, just want to add one thing to that. We, we sort of glossed over positive train control, which impacts all of us. I'm incredibly proud of the team uh, and the progress they've made since January. Um, you know, we, we were, I think, 13% of the way there. We're now over 70% of the way there, and that's a big step in the right direction. Please. Governor. Brian, is that you? I can yes, see. Yes, thank you. Um, following up on the, uh, the first question, had I think you put in $240 million in this, bu this current budget. What level of support uh, do you th does the audit suggest, or do you think MJ uh, Transit officials will need going forward on an annual basis, and when they use the term sustainable, a legislative appropriation, as we saw in the past eight years, is not necessarily sustainable. Yep. Can you think of alternatives that would make it sustainable? There are lots of different alternatives. I think it's too early to hang our hat on any one of them. I'd ask Kevin or Diane to talk about how they see the, the recommendation on funding. But we've lived too long, as we've seen, uh, from borrowing Peter to pay Paul. Uh, and, and the net result was NJ Transit got too little relative to what it needed, and the commuter bared too big a burden. I don't know if you want to comment specifically about the financing piece of this. So I think, um, as you look at the report, there's a chart in there that is extraordinarily, um, if, a, if a picture tells a thousand words, it tells 10,000 as to how we got here. The decline is steep. And so for today, for us to talk to you about how we're gonna climb that hill, it wouldn't be easy, Brian. I think uh, we, as commissioner of transportation, the important thing for me is to look at all the transportation agencies and make sure everyone has sustainable funding. Um, and that's, a, that's not an easy conversation. That's a conversation we need to have with the governor, we need to work together as a team. We need to make sure that you know we aren't robbing Peter to pay Paul anymore, which has happened for quite some time. We'll run out of apostles, and you've heard me say that before. So at the end of the day, it's more about really doing the right thing and finding that right thing. I, I'd rather be right than fast. So let us be right. Let us take our time and look at what we could propose to the governor as opportunities to, to sustain, sus give transit a sustainable dollar amount so they can actually plan and, and it'll be probably a short-term and long-term solution, but I, I would suggest you give us give us a little bit of time on that one. I'm still chewing on the Apostle line. <laughs> <laughs> okay, one, one, two, right, right, right in front of each other. Um, one of the things the report... Or, or three, is it? Okay. <laughs> That's right. One of the things the report keeps coming back to is lack of strategic planning, long-range yeah. planning. What is that going to look like? 
and how, you know, what is the time frame for putting in, as they recommended, an office's strategic planning? What is, what is the yeah. thinking about that? Yeah, so if you read the report, you're going to see a big emphasis on figuring out where the heck this thing is headed in the bigger sense. Also, a lot of emphasis on things like uh, streamlining the organizational structure, uh, which no one has more appreciation for than Kevin as he works every day with this big amount of HR uh, fixes and suggestions, procurement, technology, there's a whole raft of things that are going to be central to the success of this. I don't want to put words in their mouth, but my guess is they won't let any grass grow. So there's going to be some amount of lag between steps they take and feeling it on the platform. That's just inevitable. Um, and I will just go back to one step, this whole positive train control drama, one way or another is going to come to an end on New Year's Eve. Uh, and it will come to an end in a good way. I know that. And that's a big step. You know, there's going to be a meaningful difference on January 1st, uh, if not before. Uh, but the strategic planning process, I, I, again, I'm, I'm not going to put words in their mouths, but I assume that's something they're going to try to put in place ASAP. Yes? Yeah, we'll go issues. back. I promise you. I apologize. One of the issues raised in the audit is uh, employee morale. And uh, it talks about all the various issues. But amongst them, it said that in interviews, many of the workers mentioned your calling NJ Transit a national disgrace at the end of last year and how that demoralized yeah. people further. Do you, do you regret now saying that NJ Transit was a national disgrace? Just let me ask you, you a question first. What's your football team? <laughs> <laughs> I, don't, uh, yeah, I, don't, I don't follow football. Soccer. Soccer, I'm talking about. No, neither. Okay. Neither. Just <laughs> Sorry. Trying to change the subject. Sorry. Ray, Ray is the best person, I think, to opine on this. Speaking of apostles, uh, St. Ray down here in the front. Um, I, I believe I went out of my way, and I, and, I, and I hope that folks understood this, to say that it was a national disgrace, but it wasn't because of the hardworking men and women who came to work every day. It was uh, because leadership, because of leadership, because of the lack of funding. Uh, it was not because of the rank and file. And I think they understand that for the most part, but I want to make sure that they, they do, and I reiterate that today. The thousands of men and women who come into work in all aspects of NJ Transit every day trying to do the best job they can are among the most impressive uh, employees of any organization that I've, I've been around. And I want to make sure folks understand that. Please, I apologize. Can you talk about the personnel changes that are expected under the audit? Are you going to see Hiring, are you going to see layoffs? I'll, I'll, I'll defer to these folks. Kevin, you want to come in? Uh, yeah, certainly. I think it, clearly we're in about one is getting the structure right, uh, and some of it is just incredibly basic. I think uh, one small indication on the HR side, uh, a lot of the uh, most of the staff have not had the annual performance reviews in eight, nine, ten years, so they don't have a, a clear mission, not just how they perform, what their key performance metrics are. What are their opportunities for advancement? Do they want to stay in the same position? They love that. That's great. But then if they want to advance, also succession planning. I mean, some of the most basic things have been neglected. So you start at that, that, that level. I think that's uh, you know, as, far as, as far as where we go up. Um, but for the uh, morale going, going forward, as far as hiring, we are very much hiring. And not just, you know, obviously for bus and rail, we have a whole range of technicians. Uh, Diane is uh, working, uh, leading an effort to also transportation is like the, is the lifeblood. Obviously, I'm selfish about transit, but we are, this is the, the gullet of America for you know, uh, private, public sector for transportation. Uh, credible jobs, opportunities, uh, and Diane leading a charge for that, not just for transit, but overall for the needs. So we are, it's a very exciting time, uh, and I think uh, the staff are starting to see that. Uh, the governor mentioned PTC, the project team, and how we organize that to really focus on delivery, and uh, you know, we nicknamed it Project Sea Biscuit. The the, uh, the positive, uh, when people start seeing really positive results and start getting enthusiasm, and they have clear lines of responsibility, and they know how they're going to measure, uh, you know, and we're actively hiring to fill, you know, hundreds of vacant positions. I, I think it's phenomenal. I just want to jump on that for a minute. Do you want to say something? I just want yeah, to, so just to be very direct, th there is no discussion of layoffs at all. So, heaven forbid. Um, that's not in the plan. You know, change is tough. There'll be difficulty. You know, people may be uncomfortable. But they will have a home at New Jersey Transit so long as they're doing well and performing and want to be part of our team. So I'll echo something I said a, a, a while ago, but haven't said lately. Two two quick comments. Number one, I believe with all my heart that New Jersey is a, is America's number one turnaround story, and no organization embodies that more or better than NJ Transit. And that just to add that adds to the point that Kevin made. This is in for all the challenges. This is an exciting time to be a part of this ride. 
uh, because there's only one way to go, and we're going to get we're going to get there. Now I'm going to say something which is getting out over I don't ski, but getting out over my skis, uh, and that is a, a, another cool idea that these folks in very early stages are thinking about is talking to the Secretary of Higher Education, the Commissioner of Education, ultimately with the legislative leaderships, on how we can better connect, as an example, community colleges, vocational technical high schools, into the career track where we are so sorely lacking, particularly in, in the case that's gotten the most amount of press are engineers. That's something that's very early stage. You can't, you can't put in place exact, or, or say explicitly how that's going to evolve. Uh, but that's a pretty exciting possibility. So that's one of many things that are getting me jazzed here. Please, Elise. Uh, there was no mention, there was no analysis in this uh, audit of positive train control and what went wrong with that. Uh, the project was delayed for years and years. There's no mention of why that happened um, as costs grew. Uh, and I was wondering whether MD Transit had any internal curiosity of why that happened, or was the whole PPC project off limits for this audit? Um, I will defer to Diana. So, so the procurement was um, actually administered by the DOT um, to make sure that it remained independent. And I think, Elise, um, the governor really gave us 100 days to get this done. And as I said in the beginning, we can continue to talk about what happened, and, and the senator said it as well, or we can look forward. Um, I don't think we're counting what happened in the last eight years was a productive use of the time or money of North Highlands. I think we all can probably come up, reach our own conclusions as to what happened. It received no attention. Um, and so it, it was a small group of people, two or three, and then it maybe was four or five. And then, you know, basically when the feds came back and said you have a brick wall on December 31st, I think is about the same time the governor won the election, and we got a brick wall put in front of us. So to rehash um, what happened, uh, this is not really a productive use of a consultant's time when we, we know. Um, so what we're doing is really focusing, again, all our time on what it takes to go forward. You know, progress is what we want to see. You don't want to hear excuses. We, 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 we're done. Um, now it's our, we have a report, and as Kevin said, we have a roadmap, and our job is going to be to take that roadmap, disseminate it to our teams, we're going to work on this every day. There is the grass will not grow under our feet. We will, we're not going to wait. But to talk about PTC and what happened, I, I don't know that other than to say, see, we told you so, we're going to get a lot out of that. Tell me how I fix it far better than tell me why something went wrong. How many people are working on PTC? Would you oh, say right now? Oh, well, we have bad uh, 30, 30, 30 full time plus outside consultants. Yeah, yeah. The, the, we're, we're staffed so We've got a, a, a small, if not a large army on this. Please. Uh, commuters have a constant complaint about communications. Yes. Basically, they don't find out what's happening until they're on the platform. Specifically, what's going to be done to improve yeah. communications with commuters? Um, I got so emotional, I almost fell down. <laughs> um, so I'm less charitable than Diane and Kevin and Pat are. I, we, we inherited a mess, so let me just say that. Uh, but having said that, uh, I look in the mirror when it comes to communications. Uh, it may not have been good in the past, but it's been unacceptable in the first nine months that I've been here. Uh, so that one's on us. Uh, and it will be fixed, and it must be fixed. I'll give you all a chance to, to give any more detail to that. Yeah, I think, uh, you know, Larry, two points. One, on the bus side, if you, you, know, if you have our app, you know, our, my, our my bus app, if you put in the uh, stop uh, that you see, we'll have a, uh, each station has a number, you get that, and that works fairly well. So I think, you know, if you look at the bus side, there's always more we can do. I think the real issue that you're alluding to is what's happening on the rail side. And that has been the communication, our rail operations center down in Kearney. I think you may know if you're building there. A lot of that uh, software is, for security reasons, is not interfacing with uh, the regular communications. And the communication between that center and uh, what was going on in headquarters and what was getting relayed out in the field for our communications department, there were gaps in that. Uh, so that is why we've reactivated the uh, war room that we use like in snowstorms, et cetera, uh, at the Emergency Operations Center, and we now have everybody in that same room to make sure that what the ops people are seeing can get relayed out, and our people who are in touch with social media can communicate as they start seeing things on social media. So not perfect, but it's getting better. Uh, the other thing relates to, uh, you know, the uh, uh, um, uh, train, uh, you know, the trains on short notice as someone who arrives out of Morristown early in the morning every day. And going back, I certainly experienced that uh, sometimes. And that gets into the engineer shortage. And when they have to start going down, because we are so far below the critical mass, 
when an engineer is not available, and then you start going down the, uh, uh, the list of who else is uh, available, and you run through that list, you may not know why you literally do you know, uh, an hour beforehand when someone's coming off from another run. And that's that triage process that we've talked about. That's why I want to just add, if I may, Kevin. Sure. Uh, that, that's it. This isn't a, only a communications issue, issue per se. The hip bone's connected to the thigh bone here in many respects. In the engineering, uh, the uh, depth of the engineering uh, pool is a, a good example of that. Maybe we'll do one more. Do you have, do you have another yeah, yes. Governor, I'm off topic, I wanted to ask you about um, you know, the, the chief of the staff for the SDA, Al Alvarez, has resigned. He's deleted his social media accounts. Can you explain why he left and whether there's any sort of inquiry into uh, I know that Al has resigned, and beyond that, I've got no more color to offer. Um, I want to go back to, to um, uh, a, I'll, do one, I'll do one more. Uh, if you hit the brick wall on the 31st, and you haven't completed There are many years in my life where I have hit the brick wall on the 31st, by the way. But, uh, and you haven't completed the PCC switch over, what do you do? What's, your, what's plan B? We will, we will, we will succeed. There's, there's no, there is no plan B. We will succeed. And we're working closely with the FRA and Amtrak. Yeah, FRA and Amtrak have been great partners. We will get there. So listen, I want to go back and just sort of uh, leave you with one thought, other than thanking Senator Kane, Senator Dignan, Laura. Thank you again for an extraordinary uh, setup, and here's to better times ahead. Diane and Kevin, thank you. Thanks for hosting us, Mayor. Um, again, come back to the sort of frame. Um, what draws people, what draws businesses to New Jersey. And if you look at our budget, if you look at our master economic plan, if you look at our actions literally every day, you know, we're tying our fortunes to education and infrastructure. I'll put education to the side for a minute, uh, where we start in a very good place and need to make sure we stay there and get even stronger. With infrastructure, it is roads and bridges and tunnels and ports uh, but it's, uh, and it certainly is buses, but the, 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 the patient that needs the most attention is the rail side of this. And so we want to be able to continue to attract guys like him going to Maplewood or Laura to come back to Metuchen, uh, because we've got several hundred of the best public school districts in the United States, and because they can get to work on time and safely and back home to see their family at night. That's sort of the value proposition of New Jersey on its best day. Uh, that it may not be the cheapest place in the world to be, for sure, but it is good value for money, and that you can get your kids educated like no other place in the country, and you can get there and back safely and on time. Now, we benefit in so many respects by New York City's um, strength. Uh, it's a big, we're in a big metro area, um, and I would just say you hear time and time again with, from families and companies right now who are looking at a New York or a New Jersey. And I wish nothing but goodwill for New York. I hope they, they're as, as strong as they can be because we benefit without question about that. Uh, but it's going to take, by some estimates, $35 billion to fix that subway system. $35 billion. I don't know if that's right or not, but that's the number you read in the paper. Um, we are not where we need to be by a long shot on NJ Transit, but we're not talking about that kind of, those kind of numbers by a long shot. This is fixable. It is within our grasp and it's fixable within our grasp in a reasonable amount of time. It won't be tomorrow, as Diane and Kevin always re remind me, the incremental when do you see it on the platform question is going to be uh, longer than people uh, should have to wait uh, and, and uh, end up will waiting. But we will get there, and we'll get there within our means and within a reasonable amount of time so that folks, whether they're a family or a business, say, you know what, that, va that value proposition is working. I can get great education for my kids, among the best in the country, among the very best in the country, and I can move around safely and on time, uh, and I'm prepared to pay for that. That's the New Jersey that we, we have had uh, under your dad. That was the New Jersey that we had, uh, and that's the New Jersey that we will have again. Thank you all very much.